What's good, YouTube? This your boy, Hufax TV, and I'm back with another reaction video. Y'all know my motto. I'm not about to hold y'all up. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell for yourself so you can get notified when I drop more bangers like this one. Get in the comments. Talk to y'all boy. Y'all know I talk back. Smash that like button, man. We're about to get into this video. This is a good one. The birth of ATK versus KTA. This joint just dropped. You know I had to go ahead and do a quick reaction to it. Shout out to the homeboy Trap. All credits to him in this video. But without further ado, we're about to jump into this video. Let's get it. At the start of 2021, a song called Who I Smoke came out and went mega viral. Now, from the outset, this looked like any innocent hip-hop video. With a bunch of nice-looking, well-dressed young men out on the golf course for an enjoyable day teeing off on the green. Hmm, these young men seem to be known as ATK, okay. Well, it turns out that that ain't the name of their local golf club. In fact, you might have missed something very important if you didn't pay attention at the start of that video. Because what- What? What did we miss, Trap? Talk to your boy. Let me know what I missed, boy. When the first guy tees off his golf ball, a bullet shell casing drops to the ground. I'm oh no, I didn't miss that. I definitely seen that. The editing was fire, like literally. Once this subtle reference to shootings has passed, we then begin to hear a very familiar musical sample, Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles. Well, what a charming song to hit a few balls off the green to, eh? And for the first 30 seconds of the video, all we see is our well-dressed protagonists jamming out to some Vanessa Carlton and having a great day on the course. But at a certain point, the beat drops and these boys go from Tiger Woods to tie him up and put him in a woods. Because what followed was one of the most diabolical and disrespectful diss songs in hip-hop history. This song, Who I Smoke, goes on to reference around half a dozen murdered gang members, many of whom were only teenagers when they were killed. No real guns appear in this music video, only hidden and coded references to violence, like the shell casing dropping to the ground at the start, or the toting of fake water pistols instead of real guns. So the charming settings of the visuals of this music, combined with the demonic gang shit that the rappers are actually speaking about, unsurprisingly, made this piece of media go mega viral. And before you know it, it seemed like everybody on social media was singing who I smoke. However, very few people took a step back to understand exactly what or who these gang-affiliated golf course gophers were actually talking about. Since then, countless of hilarious reaction videos have been made to who I smoke, along with a handful of breakdowns which try to get to the heart of exactly why these two groups in Jacksonville have been beefing for so many years. Now, I've spent the last few weeks taking a closer look at this story and I would say that until now nobody has truly captured the magnitude of the wild shit that has gone down between these two groups and I all right well show me talk to me in your little 14 minute video since you got everything figured out let your boy know what's going on after everything I've learned, I'm honestly convinced that this right here is the bleakest, darkest, and most disrespectful feud in rap, hell, even gang history. Because in many ways, the Jacksonville hoods that the boys involved in this story come from are truly some of the most dangerous and deadly in the entire world. Seriously, some of what you're about to hear today is gonna make Shy Rack look like Disneyland. So buckle up, pour a drink, roll a woods, and prepare yourself for one of the most craziest, and heartbreaking stories that hip hop has ever seen. But allow me to warn you people, this one is not for the faint of heart. Trap Ross is getting witty with his, his, his commentary too, man. Like he definitely done stepped it up, man. Today's story takes place in Jacksonville in the northeast of Florida. Now, many decades ago, Jacksonville became a consolidated city county with Duval County. This created one metropolitan area called the City of Jacksonville and Duval County, an enormous area which actually is the most populated city in all of Florida. Now, that's not strictly important for this story, but sometimes you might hear people referencing things that went down in Jacksonville or Duval County. Just know that they're basically one and the same. Now, if you've been a fan of Florida rappers like YNW Melly, then you'll know that guns are readily available available in the state of Florida. In fact, the majority of people in the state seem to be armed to the teeth. And much like the city itself, the gangs that roam the streets of Jacksonville have a long history too. Over the past few decades, many gangs and gangsters have called Jacksonville, Florida their home. From Rolling Twenties Bloods, to Crips, GDs, and Hispanic gangs like MS-13, fleeing other states and setting up shop in Jacksonville. However, the gangsters that we're interested in for the sake of this story are those talented ones who rap. And when it comes to Jacksonville, one of the biggest names to ever ever come out of the city is, of course, Young Ina Ace. Real name Kayanta Bullard, Ace was born in Chicago but moved to Florida as a child. He actually started- 
what? I didn't know he was born in Chicago. But, you know, like a lot of people, man, we got ties in Chicago, too. My whole father's side is from Chicago. I was in Chicago. I stayed in Chicago until I was like, I want to say nine years old. And then we moved back to Buffalo. But my whole, my father, my cousins and all of them is definitely from the, um, Chicago. Started rapping at the young age of 14, finding himself rolling with a crew of rapping G's called the Youngin Gang, a crew apparently founded by Flip the Youngin and Trigger Romo. They were older than me, I was the youngest. Oh, okay. But they name was to spell it like Y-U-N-G. So Ace, along with his Youngin Gang boys, made songs like the early track Go To War, which came along with a music video where they were showing off some heavy artillery. Hell, at one point, a dude even pulls out a World War One looking rifle with a goddamn bayonet at the end. Guess these guys are in the trenches for real, for real. Now that music... Yo, where the fuck did you be finding them old ass pirate guns from? That had to be like an old, like somebody had to do a burglary or something and found that in a house or something. Like that was a collector item because like I know you're not going to buy no gun like that. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like somebody definitely, definitely, definitely broke in somebody's house and found somebody collector's item because man, you're not buying no gun like that. Like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? This video introduced us to a few other familiar faces that were around Ace in the early days of his career. That includes Ace's blood brother, Quan Quan, or Two Times, and his close homie, 23, or RJ. Now, this was Ace's first big breakout song, racking up a whopping 100k views in the first week, going on to rack up a big boy M. This was the song that made Ace a bona fide rapper. And despite a minor setback with Ace getting sent to jail on a juvenile charge, with his first taste for success in the music industry, Ace would continue to flood the market with music and raise his profile. So with a lot of success in the rap game and a solid reputation in the streets, Ace's circle of influence in Jacksonville would continue to grow. And over time, fans would begin to recognize the faces of people in his crew. Other people include Kobe, AKA Four, Fast Money Goon, Rollo, Red Dot, D De Niro, Ray Spaz, Trey Shorty, Crazy K, Sosa, or Scotty. Now, at a certain point later on in the story, Ace lost a few of his day one homies and would move away from the Youngin Gang, which was originally made up of Ace's day one homies more from the Orange Park and West Side of Jacksonville. However, over time and as the story develops, Ace and his remaining friends from the West would grow close to a number of crews on the East Side of Jacksonville, forming a new group of crews which would roll together under the name of ATK, something which most people seem to understand as standing for Ace's top killers, but for the record, other people have described ATK as potentially standing for Ace to kill, aim to kill, or just being short for attack. So this crew, as they were known, would soon become affiliated with- I honestly didn't know what the hell that shit meant, but all of them joints, I mean, okay. Sound about right, because I definitely didn't know what this shit meant. The Melvin Park area of Jacksonville, with several people that represent under the ATK banner hailing from there, including the supposed demon of Jacksonville, K- is it crazy that I fucks with Ace, but I felt bad when Fulio got unalive? That's crazy because I fucked with Fulio too, but Ace make the better music. Fulio make that grimy undertone, underground type music, but I fucks with Fulio music too, but I just felt I fuck with Ace music just a little more, but I, I fucks with Fulio as a person. Because I just felt like I, I always root for the underdog. You know what I'm saying? I just felt like even with the um FBG Duck and the old block, I always rooted for FBG Duck because I felt like they was the underdog because uh old block and them had the money, they had the resource, you know what I'm saying? It, half of their label was signed and stuff like that. So I really um always root for the underdog. So I felt bad when both I really felt bad when FBG uh duck got murdered. Like that was like I really rocked with him, like, you know what I'm saying, Fire, he made, the, he made great music, like, literally, and you could tell he's a good person, but, yeah, I just always root for the underdog, you know what I'm saying, no matter what, I don't ever pick sides, just, like, you know, Fire's the, um, the beef, but Fire's the music, I always root for the underdog. Hey, so, now we're gonna learn more about this guy as the story goes on, but let me tell you, he is super scared. By his own admission, Queso will quite literally kill for anything. I kill you if you're staring at my grandpa Jabos. My mama told me chill, cause I be killing niggas. You for real? Man, for real, I be really killing niggas. I don't tell lies. All I do is stay fast. Kill any nigga. I do not care where he at. He ain't lying. 
We've also got Queso's brother, Boss Goon, ATK YBZ, and also affiliated with ATK are the Crew 1200, hailing out of 1200 block on the east side, a crew which back in the day has been referred to as 187 or out west. Now this crew is affiliated with an area running from the TIAA Bank Field to Evergreen Cemetery and up to just before 21st Street. Some members of this group have been known to represent under the S4C, meaning Spaz for Corbin, a reference to a fallen friend of theirs. And you might also see Jump Out or Cuckoo Gang affiliated with members of this group too. And hailing from this area are several Jump familiar faces such gang. as Spinner Benz and his blood brother Whopper with the Chopper, aka Ducci, as well as AT Michi, Bevel 5 or B5, Lil Popper, Greenlight, Lil Leaky, and Shook. So that's the ATK crew. Now let's have a look at their ops, KTA. It's so crazy because the only person I know from ATK is Julio. And I might know a couple faces, but that's like the main guy that I knew from over there. ATK's sworn enemies are KTA, which stands for Kill Them All. Not very friendly, that, is it? Just like ATK has its origins in the Youngin Gang, it's been said that KTA has its roots in a more organized crew of OG Jacksonville gangsters called PCE, or Problem Child Entertainment. Now, this is a legit gang that was really dismantled in a 2017 RICO case. This saw over 10 senior members from the PCE operation facing racketeering charges for multiple counts of murder and firearms offenses. Now, this group had actually attracted a significant amount of attention from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office following a tragic January 2016 incident when a 22-month-old baby, Aiden McClendon, was sadly killed after being sat in the baby seat of a car that was targeted in a drive-by shooting. The police were able to connect those bullets that killed that baby to the PCE crime organization. That's what I'll be saying. Sometimes y'all dudes be wildin', like literally be wildin'. Get up on a person that you got beef with. Stop shooting in these cars. Stop shooting in these houses because you're killing kids and you're killing innocent people that don't have nothing to do with it. And it's fucked up. It's literally fucked up, man. You're going to get no brownie points for that. And if you get caught, you should get put under the jail. Like, literally. And both of the shooters in this case were convicted of murder. Two Good. guilty verdicts were read. One for Henry Hayes and one for Kwame Richardson, who were tried separately. Prosecutors say both were targeting a rival gang member when 22-month-old Aiden McClendon was shot and killed. His mother on the city's east side. But to make things even more crazy, it's been suggested that that 22-month-old baby that was killed was actually a direct relative of Whopper with a Chopper and Spinner Benz. But anyway, regardless of that, with this kind of fuck shit going down in the streets affecting 22-month-old children, it's no surprise that the Jacksonville cops ended up cracking down hard on PCE. But growing up in the midst of the budding gang wars on the streets of Jacksonville, Jacksonville is a young rapper by the name of Fulio, aka Julio Fulio, aka Lil Six. Now this nickname is derived from the Six or Six block in Jacksonville where Fulio hails from, a territory apparently stretching from 45th and Moncrief up to Avenue B, with Fulio specifically hailing from the Hilltop Village Apartments. Now this area is the north side of Jacksonville, the area which Fulio says is also the most violent part of the city. I'm from the north side of Jacksonville, 1646 West 45th Street. Yeah. Six. Yeah, that's about the side of Jazzville. Now, Fulio is considered the most hated rapper in Florida. And it's easy to see why when you consider how he came up. Fulio said that he had to buy his very first gun for protection when he was in just the seventh grade. Because apparently he was already beefing with grown men with bigger guns. A nigga got his first gun in the motherfucking seventh grade. He said he's going to seven the deuce fire, so after that it was a rap. We'll always beef with grown older niggas, so shit, oh, yeah. they always had to advantage and shit of us like they always had the guns and the cars to pull up on us and you feel we never had that shit Fulio's upbringing seems like it was Crazy. nothing but pain in fact his father was murdered when Fulio was only 13 years old being shot in the head twice in a brutal attack apparently retribution after a man that Fulio's father had beaten up a month before came to get get back Fulio even said that he witnessed his first murder at close range at the young age of 12. Problems, I saw a nigga get shot in this shit, but this was in, a, in my other dog, this was in West Jacks, I was probably like 12 years old. Jacks, he beat the shit though, my dog booba, but yeah, point blank range, nigga. I was 12 years old seeing that type of shit though, that shit went nuts. Apparently, Fulio also got shot in the leg getting off the school bus, age 50. We getting out the bus and shit. I ain't thinking nothing of it though. I got my uniform on, books, man. I ain't thinking nothing of it. I'm like, since a regular day. This my first day of school. Mind you not, this my first day getting, because I got kicked out of school, another school for fighting. So this my first day in an alternative school. 
<laughs> so boom, nigga had ran through the cut when the shooting, I got hit on my motherfucking hip one time. So having described Jacksonville as a literal war zone, then it's no surprise to find out that apparently Fulio had lost around 15 friends to gun violence before he had even turned 20. In fact, you'll hear Fulio telling his deceased friends to rest up in his music frequently. Names like Vonte, Kendre, and Nooski pop up in Fulio's music frequently, but thankfully being forced to literally dodge bullets now in theaters. Home sweet home. Welcome back, Chief. Bullets on the way to school in the morning as a kid didn't dampen Fulio's spirit. Apparently he was always a charismatic young spitter and was apparently rapping his entire childhood despite the violence going on around him. I always been a rapper like that's just been me, a rapper now, nigga. Like, I, know, I always know how to rap, so I was good. The first song of Fulio's <laughs> that got a few hundred thousand views was the track Coming Up. And off the back of the success of that song, he would drop mixtapes like Who I Am before leveling up with the sequel called Industry Invasion. Over time, Fulio would gradually pick up a bigger buzz and more attention in the industry, eventually landing in the studio with some big name producers. Most notably, Atlanta legend Zaytoven, creating bangers like How You Do It, and the fully Zaytoven produced mixtape Six Toven. Now, we'll cover the specific and significant music Music releases as they pop up during the beef, but for now, let's just focus who's affiliated with Fulio and his six block crew. Also hailing from the six, no Drizzy, is Fulio's longtime friend and frequent collaborator Kojak. There's Fulio's blood cousin, Zion Brown, aka Tweaking Jit or TJ. There's Tiki, aka T Shots, Trey D, aka 8, K Shorty, Spaz Two Times, not to be confused with Spaz from 80k, Lil PD, aka 35, Fulio's young G Bibby, and Dirk, another close friend of Fulio's who was murdered all the way back in 20. 14 as part of that PCE beef. So that's the majority of Fulio and his six block outlined. But as time and beef went on in Jacksonville, the KTA crew formed out of six block and a few other Jacksonville crews that were all beefing with KTA crews. This includes an affiliated crew from a hood called Vontaland, which includes blocks such as Callaway Cove, the Washington Heights Apartments, and Ken Knight Drive. And Vontaland is where Fulio's friend Rod K is from. You've also got A Block, which really just refers to the Arlington area in Jacksonville, an area which is geographically in the east of Jacksonville, but considered the south side by the people that live there. And now this brings us to the Y&R crew. Sometimes referred to as Dankway or A Block in the past, Y&R is an Arlington-based squad of extremely feared gangsters in Jacksonville, with many of the following members having been associated with, but for the record not proven to have been involved with a lot of the more serious altercations between these two crews. You've got people like Y&R Mookie, Cho, Bree, Lil Ron, Y&R Slugger T, who Oh, I, I heard of the Wyan Slugger T guy. I, I, that's the only guy that I really heard on him. And who was this guy right here? This this guy right here. And I've seen this guy before. But the rest of these dudes, I never even heard of them before. For the record, being one of the only white guys involved with these crews seems to attract some pretty crazy and kind of funny comments online. For the record, I think Wyan's Slugger T looks like a pretty tough guy who looks right at home in Wyan. And nah. for the record, I also do not. Nah, he do look like he right at home. He don't look like he, like, he don't look like he one of them pretenders. He look like he been in the field for a minute, like for real, like he don't play. Any problems. Anywho, also repping these parts is Baby9, AKA Juju, Lil9, and Mr. Beatbox himself, Spot em Got em, who's apparently originally from Lackawanna on Jacksonville's west side, but he's- We all know Spot em Got em, but I definitely didn't know he was a part of um, Julio's crew known to rep Arlington, showing love to his set by spending one of the early bags that he got on this bust down INR chain. And funnily enough, on the day of recording this, I just found- Oh, now I see. See, I don't be knowing nothing, man. I don't be knowing anything. Out that he apparently dropped that chain off a jet ski. Anyway. Sell another piece, man. 30, 30 ball in the fucking water. 30 ball in the water, bro. Like I said before, that's not everybody that's associated with Fulio, Six Block, or KTA, but just some important faces that are going to be relevant for this story. And just for the record, so that it's super easy for you guys to understand, Arlington is from A Block, which is considered the south side of Jacksonville. Fulio is from Six Block, considered the north side of Jacksonville, most dangerous side. So that's north and south under KTA territory. You've got Young In Ace, who is originally from the west side, but eventually, ATK ended up including a lot of people and crews from the east side too. So basically what you've got going on in Jacksonville is north and south beefing with east and west. I hope that makes it a bit easier to understand. So now you know the people involved, the turf being fought over, and the history of crime in the city, you're ready to take a closer look at why these two groups started feuding and how this became one of the most deadly feuds in rap history. You already know he about to drop another part. He probably gonna drop four or five of these, you know what I'm saying? And we gonna definitely cover every one of them, man. I definitely wanna know why the Food started, man.
like I said before, I always root for the underdog, but I already for a fact that um Ace make the better music as far as the quality and the quality of videos and stuff like that. But I definitely, definitely mess with Fooly on and RIP to him and RIP to everybody else that lost the, their life in this war. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, we definitely gonna stay tuned and and and, and be ready when Dr Trap drop them other videos. I'm not about to hold y'all up. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. So you get notified when I drop more bangers like this one. Get in the comments. Talk to your boy, man. Let me know what you want me to react to. I'll definitely get to it, man. Smash that like button, man. And I'm up out of here. Thank you.